Greetings, I'm Nir Lerner, Editor-in-Chief of The Legal Seagull, and today we'll be discussing prenuptial agreements, also known as prenups. A prenuptial agreement is a contract signed between two people prior to marriage that details how their assets and liabilities will be divided in the event of divorce or death. When this type of contract is negotiated after marriage, it's known as a postnuptial agreement or a postnup. But for purposes of today, we'll, we'll be talking about prenups, but much of this applies as well to the decision of whether to get a postnup. Read the Legal Seagull's disclaimer at thelegalseagull.com slash disclaimer. Nothing I'm saying here is legal advice. It's solely legal information. It's not state specific and every jurisdiction has its own laws regarding prenups and the division of assets and some states are community property states, which we'll get into, and others are not. So really the only way to know for sure uh, is to do your own research or uh, I'd recommend you speak with an attorney licensed in your state uh, who practices in this area and who is knowledgeable about prenuptial agreements. For a lot of people, the prenup conversation is, is not easy to have at this stage uh, when, you're, when you're planning to get married because you want to focus on, on the good aspects and maybe kids if, if that's part of your plan and how to live your life together. And this just kind of doesn't register on your radar. You don't want to think about divorce. And some people even take it a step further and say, if you plan for a divorce, that's exactly what's going to happen. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. Other people just don't believe they'll get divorced. They get engaged and they're madly in love and they just cannot possibly uh, imagine a situation. And there are some statistics out there that say that 50% of marriages in the United States end in divorce. But whether it's 50% or 25% or 35%, we all statistically have a pretty decent chance of getting divorced even though we don't want to think about it and I don't want to think about it. But it's a possibility. So I think it's, it's definitely a conversation to have early on if you can, uh, and if it's not gonna blow up your whole, your whole marriage or, or your whole engagement. I've been married for almost a decade, so I'm not an expert on the matter, but marriage is kinda like a business. You have assets together, and ho hopefully those assets grow over time, but often that's not the case, and a lot of times you know, your debt grows, your liability grows, your, you, you enter into loans together, you assume debt together, sometimes debt separately, you may get involved in legal entanglements separately. Things start to get complicated, as they do when you go into business with someone. So I think at least insofar as assets and liabilities, it's helpful to think of marriage as a business decision as well as a personal or romantic entanglement. I don't know why I use the word entanglement. That sounds kind of, kind of harsh, but I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with it. Hopefully, my wife's not watching this. Another reason some people don't consider a prenup is because they say, "Well, we're both broke, so it doesn't make any sense for us to get a prenup." And I suppose there's some logic to that. What are you dividing? Well, as I said earlier, prenups are not only negotiated with respect to division of assets, but also liabilities. So you want to plan, what if your spouse develops a gambling problem and runs up some gambling debt? I don't know, 10 grand, 100 grand, 200 grand? What if, uh, if your spouse incurs other kinds of debts? What if one of you is coming in with loans or significant debt prior and the other doesn't have it? If you don't bring up the M word, money, before you get married, I guarantee you it's gonna come up after you're married. So with that in mind, Let's get started. There's two systems for distribution of assets and liabilities upon divorce and death in the United States, and it depends on the states. Generally speaking, there's community property states, which includes Arizona, California, Idaho, Nevada, New Mexico, Texas, Louisiana, Wisconsin, Washington, and Alaska, which is an optional, it's complicated. If you live in Alaska, do some research or speak with an attorney. This amounts to about 25% of the population of the U.S. Uh, that is living under a community property system. And I'm going to explain generally what community property is and why the distinction is so important and why that might affect your decision to get or not to get 
a prenup. In a community property state, generally speaking, assets, liabilities, and income are divided equally between the parties 50-50. And there's some exceptions to that, which we're, we're not really going to get into, uh, but that's the general rule that there's a 50-50 split on community property. The remaining states have what's called an equitable distribution system. And that's not a 50-50 system, but it's one where the judge has more leeway to do the division. And they could take into account aspects like how long the couple has been married, uh, each party's health and education and their, their possibility for, for advancement in work, their training, their age, and also whether a party is at fault for the divorce. So things like adultery, abuse, abandonment, things like that. The first step you're gonna to wanna to make is to find out uh, what the law is in your state, if you're a community property state or an equitable distribution state, and do your research accordingly or preferably speak to an attorney licensed in your state practicing in this area about that. The first reason to consider getting a prenup is to protect money and property acquired prior to the marriage. So if you have assets that you acquired prior to marriage, you want to protect them, whether you earned them or made them, whether you inherited them or given to them or from prior marriage. These may include money or stocks or bonds or real estate, vehicles, boats, personal items, whatever it is. And this is especially important in community property states. Let me give you an example. Peter and Lois are about to get married. They live in a community property state. Peter has $25,000 that he inherited from his mother and another $30,000 he saved while working at the local ice cream parlor. In theory, the money that Peter came into the marriage with, even under community property state, would be his separate property. The problem is that when you get together and you get married, you start to combine your bank accounts and you do what's called commingling of assets. That makes it very difficult sometimes to trace the original source of the funds, whether something was separate property or community property. For example, Peter and Lois may fund joint bank accounts, as I mentioned a minute ago. They could mix Peter's inheritance with savings that they got from something else, or perhaps rental income from properties they own in common. They could use some of Peter's money for a down payment on a home or even for renovations or to pay down another loan. As the months go by and, and the years go by and people live their lives and use money when they, when they need it, these things can eventually get mixed up and the commingling can make it difficult. And that's one of the things that a prenup can do is protect those assets that Peter had before if the couple wishes to do that. The second reason for getting a prenup is to protect income and assets obtained during marriage. So it's not just assets prior to marriage that you can protect. A well-drafted prenup, uh, assuming that this is permitted in your, in your jurisdiction, can protect assets and income that you make while married. Here's an example. Hopefully not overly simplistic, but I hope this will illustrate the point. Tarzan and Jane live in a community property state. Prior to marriage, Tarzan had $10,000 in savings, which he maintained in a separate account throughout the marriage. During their 20-year marriage, Tarzan refused to work, spent every day swinging on trees, eating bananas, and pounding his chest ferociously. With Jane working three jobs, the couple managed to save $200,000. Not bad. When Tarzan filed for divorce, he kept his $10,000 premarital savings and got half of the couple's joint savings. I'm not saying that Tarzan shouldn't be entitled to anything because he didn't work. Many families, including the family that I grew up in, has one spouse working with the other spouse staying at home, raising the kids, tending to household duties, and doing all those things that are very valuable things. And uh, I wouldn't argue that that spouse would not be entitled just because they're not working. In fact, the household duties and the kids in many ways are way harder than a job in an office. Uh, I know in my case, that's, that's certainly the case. A day alone with the kids, uh, when, when, when my wife comes home on days that I'm watching the kids for school closures or something, I, I would take any day in the office, even a stressful day. 
There's, there's also couples that uh, one of the spouses doesn't work because of disability or illness or because they just don't have to because the other spouse is the supporting spouse. Another purpose for a prenup, perhaps not the direct reason to get one but a potential benefit, is that a prenup can help carry out your final wishes in case your will is invalidated. You can contest wills for all kinds of reasons. Somebody could come in and say, oh, dad's will is not valid because he was totally losing it. He had dementia. He had no capacity. He didn't know where he was. We're contesting that this was a valid will. And if a will is contested, which there could be a million reasons for that, which we won't get into in this uh, specific video, then the division of assets of the deceased is done either according to a prior will or what's called intestate succession. Every state has its own statute for what the order is. So like maybe your kids get for your wife, then your kids, then your parents, then your, your nephew, whatever the order is. So you could see how you may have plans in your will that are never actually executed because someone contests your will and wins. Let me give you an example. Martha and George are a childless married couple living in the state of Atlantis. Before they married, Martha had $50,000 that she won in the Atlantis lottery. Martha's will states that upon death, the $50,000 should go to her sister Abigail. Martha is killed in a duel. George challenges the will on grounds that it did not comply with Atlantis law because it was not signed and there was only one witness instead of two as required by Atlantis law. The judge sides with George and invalidates the will. With no valid will, Atlantis's intestate succession law applies. George inherits everything, including the $50,000. Wills can be contested for all kinds of reasons, including failure to comply with formalities, undue influence, lack of capacity, and even fraud. But let's say that Martha and George did have a prenup in place prior to getting married, and that prenup specified to protect Martha that the $50,000 in lottery winnings would be her separate property. In that case, George would not be entitled to the $50,000 because it's Martha's separate property, and the money would go uh, either according to her will or if it was contested, it may go elsewhere. It really depends on, on the state law, but it could have protected Martha here. So the moral of the story is that before you participate in a duel, you have to make sure you have your affairs in order. I'm just kidding. Do not participate in a duel. And if you're going to, make sure you have your affairs in order. The real moral of the story is that a prenup can serve as a backup in case your will gets contested. Another good reason to get a prenup, or at least to consider getting one, is to reduce or eliminate uncertainty, extensive litigation, fighting, and bitterness in case you have a divorce proceeding that is nasty. Everyone knows of a case of a nasty divorce, whether you've been involved in one or you know someone who's been through it. And at that point, as I mentioned earlier, it becomes very difficult uh, to negotiate in a civil manner. And I've seen many divorce proceedings that the couple had the best of intentions to actually do it amicably and it turned out to be a complete disaster. And of course, with attorneys billing at the rate of hundreds of dollars an hour, costs can really go up and it can eat away a, a couple or an ex-couple's entire estate. So it may actually save you money in the long term to reduce that uncertainty by defining from the beginning who gets what I'm going to talk right now about a few common scenarios where it may make sense for you to get a prenup. If you or your future spouse have children from a prior marriage, it may make sense to reduce the uncertainty and tension by getting some type of prenup in order. Another common scenario is if you own a business. A prenup can help you protect the business, the, the reputation, the goodwill, and the value of that business uh, that you've worked so hard to create and grow in the event that you get married. So let's say you built a successful business prior to marriage. You could still face a claim potentially by your ex-spouse upon divorce that he or she is entitled to partial ownership. And that's especially true in community property states. 
where such a claim could be made. Whether successful or not, depends. But even an unsuccessful claim to that business could be disastrous as far as litigation costs and attorney's fees. A well-drafted prenup, depending on the jurisdiction, can reduce that uncertainty by providing that some or all of the business remains the separate property of one spouse, even if the other contributes. If you have business partners, they'll probably be happy to know that you've done some planning with the prenup. Here's an example. Mario and Luigi are general partners in a plumbing business. Mario owns 60%, Luigi owns 40%. Mario's wife, Peach, files for divorce and ends up owning half of Mario's share. Now, Mario owns 30%, Peach owns 30%, and Luigi owns 40%. Neither Mario nor Luigi can stand Peach, who doesn't know a darn thing about business or plumbing and who left Mario for Toad, a young salsa dancer. Because the three do not always agree on company decisions, they're often deadlocked, with no one holding a majority. Every month, the brothers must write Peach a check for her share of the business's income. Mario and Luigi rarely enjoy each other's company anymore. Mario cries himself to sleep most nights and wishes he had negotiated a prenup with Peach. Number three, your future spouse has a lot of debt. As I mentioned earlier, in community property states especially, and in other states as well possibly, if you had debts prior to marriage, those would typically be considered to be your own even upon divorce. But that's not necessarily the case depending on your jurisdiction. Also, if there's been commingling of assets, as I described earlier, and also another way this can get murkier is what if you guys get a mortgage together? If you refinance, things get even more difficult, determining whose debt is whose, whose assets are whose. And the last thing you want is to end up being liable for your spouse's shopping debts or gambling debts or, or any kind of debt if it's something that they incurred that had nothing to do with the marriage. This is another thing that a well-negotiated prenup may be able to do, and that's to separate debts with each spouse taking on their own debt for their own personal affairs so that the other is not stuck paying it. Number four, you or your future spouse plans to obtain or is already in the process of obtaining an educational or professional degree or certificate. Each state has its own laws regarding the division or non-division of degrees and licenses upon divorce or death. Degrees and licenses can be very expensive. A law degree or a medical degree or even undergraduate degrees these days could cost a hundred or two hundred or even three hundred thousand dollars. So it's no small amount. In addition to costing a lot, they can also enhance someone's earning potential significantly. Not always true, but statistically it can. And so it takes a tremendous amount of sacrifice in terms of money and resources to earn an undergraduate degree or, or an advanced degree, a graduate degree, that often becomes a bitter point in divorce proceedings. You have a tremendous amount of sacrifice with one spouse going on and pursuing the education and the other spouse may be working in a, in a job to support that spouse or working at home to, to raise children or care for household duties on the assumption that they're both going to enjoy this degree or professional license. And then when they get divorced, the couple with the education or the, the license gets to take that and keep earning money and having a good earning potential. And the other spouse is left without that and having invested in this educational degree or professional certificate owned by the spouse and maybe even being liable for, uh, for that debt. Here's an example. During her marriage to Mark, Cleopatra earned her nursing degree. Most of her tuition was paid for by her parents and some money she inherited from her grandparents. They decided to get divorced. Mark claims that based on their state's laws, he's entitled to a portion of the nursing degree's value in addition to Cleopatra's future income because the degree was obtained during marriage. The fifth common scenario for which you may consider getting a prenup is if you plan to put your career on hold in order to raise children. It certainly is a sacrifice and oftentimes 
a spouse that gives up their career or, or puts it on pause sacrifices money and even advancement in the profession, and a prenup could be a way to protect that sacrifice in the event of a divorce. Here's an example. Josephine and Napoleon fall in love and decide to get married. Josephine quits her job as an advertising specialist in Los Angeles with a salary of 80 grand per year to move to Cleveland and start a family with Napoleon. Before she quit, Josephine was on track to be promoted to junior vice president and get regular increases in her salary. Napoleon just started his career as an architect, also making 80 grand per year. With Napoleon as the breadwinner, Josephine focuses on raising their two children, Genghis and Khan. Ten years later, the couple decides to get divorced. Now, Napoleon earns 250 grand and has a promising career. Josephine, on the other hand, sacrificed her career years earlier and must now start from scratch. She's making significantly less money than Napoleon and less than she was making before. Without a prenup in effect, Josephine is at a significant disadvantage and may have a hard time supporting herself. If you're thinking of getting married or you're already engaged, I really hope this video hasn't scared you away from the altar. All I'm saying is that a well-drafted prenup can protect your financial future, reduce or eliminate uncertainty, and make a potential divorce down the line less contentious and expensive. Hope you found this video informative. Check out The Legal Seagull for more legal information and videos and podcasts as well. And make sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Until next time, stay legal.